Family and Consumer Science. Mr. Greenland's Podcast. Let's learn facts. Feet on the floor, back straight, never file, to your plate, chew with your mouth closed, chew with your mouth closed, get your elbows off the table, this ain't a horse table. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Family Consumer Science Television. Today, I have a special guest with me. I have a fellow educator, Mr. John Moran. Thank you for coming, John. Thank you. Now, John is here uh, to root me on, and also, he is taking the Family and Consumer Science Challenge, 40-question challenge. So first, what I want everybody to do uh, watching this in a school setting, or even if you're not watching it in a school setting, get a piece of paper out. And let's number that 1 through 40. 1 through 40, John. Okay. Right? You got that? Yep. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 1 through 40, I would like your name, date, upper left-hand corner, what uh, what period you take in the class if we're <laughs> sitting in a school setting, and um, your uh, school uh, email address. Uh, I don't want any of your any addresses. Your school email address. Now, how we're going to do this is John is going, we, we're breaking it up into four categories today, John. Uh, basic facts, okay. um, uh, culinary and family consumer science terms, okay. uh, measurements, okay. uh, and then name that tool. Okay. Now, <laughs> or I should say name that equipment because I hear tool is a, is a statement that some people use to describe people. <laughs> but this is name that Name that culinary equipment. C certainly not oh. anyone we know. No, nope, no. Nope. Uh, okay. And you also, if you don't know the answer, John, please uh, say I would like to ask the producer, ask Kyle. Okay. Okay. Now, if you win today, if you, uh, if you, if, if I feel you've passed the test, uh, I will bring you downstairs to a fabulous restaurant that's below us, and we'll have a little snack. Sounds good. Uh, and also, the pride of being the facts. And facts if, champion. If I don't pass, I get in my truck and go home. You get in your truck and go home. <laughs> That's right. Okay. But uh, again, John, I, I appreciate you being here. Let's start. Okay. So everybody should have uh, 1 through 40 written on that paper right down the road. And we're going to start with basic facts intro. All right. Okay. I'm, the first one. Are you, are, are you nervous? No. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know. And you know, you lost this uh, last year. People don't run. I'll give you a little background that you lost this title last year and then regained it. Did I? Um, a month ago. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Nice. Yep. You regained it a month ago. It wasn't televised, but right. remember you, you, uh, you went against, uh, uh, I forget who his name was, Mrs. M uh, Agnes, I believe her name was. Yeah, that was a tight contest. Yeah. So Down we, to the wire. So we're filming this one. Uh, and here <sighs> we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is question number one. Please write it down when you hear it. Uh, people playing along at home and my students. Uh, number one, Mr. Moran, you have five seconds to tell me what FACTS stands for. FACTS. Just hesitate a little bit. Give people at, at, at home and at school the time to. Uh, okay. FACTS. F-A-C-S. You see it in our beautiful back here? <laughs> what do you think? Now, remember. All right. I'm going you, with something computer science. You can. You can. Oh, how about FACTS about com oh, consumer so science? Okay, you're very close. Okay. You're very close. Uh, try again. Try again. Facts around uh, consumer No, that's science. not facts. It's not facts. Oh, John, John. I think you should try. I, I would go with Ask Kyle. Okay, Kyle, what do you well, got? Kyle, we're going in early on this. What do you think facts stands for? Family and consumer science. All right. Okay. All right, Kyle. Good job, Kyle. Dug him out of that little traffic jam. It's good to have a pinch hitter. <laughs> family, family and consumer science. Okay. Is, is the answer to number one. Um, number two, which of the following uh, which of the following terms or words is not fall under the umbrella of family and consumer science? Okay? Budgeting, culinary and sanitation, uh, photo and art and menu design, electrician uh, slash diesel mechanic. Which one is not something that we study in the family and consumer science curriculum? There's just one of them? Just one out of those. Diesel mechanic. Correct. Very good. Okay. okay. All right. Diesel mechanic. The other ones that we do, we learn about budgeting in this class. Right. We learn about uh, cooking, sanitation. And electric would go uh, with the ovens arts and, and, and you got to do a little mechanical. Okay. Yep. So okay. excellent. You're, okay. uh, you're two 
One out of two. You, no, I'm giving you the other one. All right, Kyle's, okay. Get two for two. Thank you, Kyle. Okay, <laughs> what is the address of Golfstown High School? Just wait a minute, Mr. Moran. The, the address of Golfstown High School. Mr. G, that's mm -hmm. 27 Wallace Road, Golfstown, New Hampshire, 03045. All right. I didn't say 030 because Mrs. Carey wouldn't like that. No. 030. So what? You so you? That's a bonus for you, getting the zip code too. I was not expecting the zip and code. And said the number, not the letters, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, number four. Number four. Calling terms. What is the principals and the vice principals in the nurses' names at the illustrious R R workplace? Golf Sound High School. But let's start with the principal. Uh, Mr. Frank McBride. Excellent. Is the, is Good. The, our principal at Golfstown High School. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Um, Mrs. Kim McCann is our assistant principal. Yeah. Excellent. And our two nurses who've done an outstanding job, they especially sure this last year, are Kathy and. Here you go, Kyle. <laughs> Okay, how's Kyle gonna know? <laughs> well, you said ask him. Well, yeah. uh, Kathy and and um, and Jennifer. Jennifer, very Jennifer good. Jennifer. Good job, Mr. G. All right, I'm right here, across I'm, the I'm, hall from me there. I'm buddy. here. I'm here for you. Yeah, I'm right across the hall from me. Okay, you. very good. Sorry, uh, Jen. Uh, number five. How did the term mast? Now we're uh, the Golfstown High School is right off of Wallace Road. Is right off of a mast road, which is a long road. Where did that name come from, John? Oh, <sighs> think about. It. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with nature. What grows uh, really tall around here in the ocean? What do you think? That's a good hint. Well, I, I remember when I when I moved out here, and, and I love living in New England. I remember someone told me it referred to the the length of the trees, and they used them on as mass yes on, mass on, like the on, mass on of a ship and i guess that would have been the the british navy to, yes to, that to was start actually with. in the uh 16th and 1700s but i gotta tell you mr g it seems like there's a lot of massed roads and mass streets around well that's because uh, i did do a little research yeah. on this before we came in so i had a little bit of knowledge okay uh, massed roads is the roads any road that they use in a particular they cut down a tree. Okay. They need those large, super big masts for, right. for the English ships. Right. And um, so out in New Boston, Dunbarton, those trees are some, I would say, 40, 50 feet. Right. And they cut them down, and how they, right, how they transported them over to the ocean. Okay. Was Mast Road. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, I see. And this see. is, is pre-revolutionary war okay. stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, that, so huh. other towns that have mast roads. It's just other places where they were cutting down. So, trees. so a mast road would have would have been a uh, busy, you know, commer yes. commercially speaking. They would, yeah, yeah, and, okay. and, they, and they made it as straight as possible. Huh. If you notice, mast road is sort of straight. It is. It is. Um, as they, I don't know, I sure they weren't bringing them down there with tractors any, but they probably on oxen or right, yeah, what have you. So that's huh. that's the that's some good, that's some good uh, useless information. It is. It is. No, no, no. <laughs> Moving along. Good job. Number six. Why is learning facts knowledge uh, important to living a more independent and healthy life? Uh, with such things uh, that you would learn, such as cooking, storing, purchasing, cleaning, uh, and practicing uh, good cleanliness. Why is that important, John, do you think, uh, for, for uh, all of us to know, and especially kids in high school or young people in high school getting ready to be independent? Well, I mean, right just off the top of my head, I like to dabble in the kitchen once in a while, and it, it, it costs money to buy the, the ingredients and mm -hmm. time to make it. And if you're going to put the time and the money in, you, you want it to be right. You want it to taste right. Mm -hmm. You want it to derive some... Why is that important for somebody's independence to know how to cook how to store foods correctly well i, I mean uh, for, for in purchase in, in, in get, get your best okay in independence i mean you don't want to be limited to you know eggs and peanut butter sandwiches mm -hmm. you want to be you want to be able to have a little variety um you want to know how to get the maximum time out of your cold goods and not have food go bad on right, you and waste right. and waste money mm -hmm. and it's um skills you want to learn to to foster independence um Great answer. 
you're killing it right here. Uh, what? Oh boy, I can't read my own writing. Oh, what's the advantage or what do you know about the term plant-based diet? You hear that term a lot now. Plant-based diet. So we have to break this down. Plant. Okay. Based diet. What are you? What are you? What are you thinking? Right off the bat, I'm thinking non, it, it, non dairy, non meat. Is, yes. Is, okay. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's been you know it's been a nice summer, a few hot days here and there. So I've been trying to eat s salads and yep. more veggies and. Um, is that am I correct? You're correct. Okay, sorry. It, yeah, okay. it's eating a, it's eating a diet that's. Uh, some people would do 100% plant-based diets, but okay. that's tough. Yeah. But we're getting into stuff like uh, uh, soy burger. You know, Burger right. King jumped into the Impossible Whopper. Right. Plant-based, you're hearing a lot about. Now, Mr. G, is plant-based, would that cover peaches and cantaloupe and everything? Yes. Okay. We, well, that'd be, yeah. I would, it's I would, not I, just I don't know exactly what, okay. what yeah, they would well, say, but they it's, come it's, from it's not using any meats. Okay, no meat. Or no less dairy. meats in your diet. Okay. No, I used to eat red meat probably, geez. Almost every day, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. that was like a common thing back in the right. 70s, right. 80s. Yeah, that's bacon in the, yeah. Yeah, right. but now as we're getting a little bit, uh, what's the word we're looking for? We're trying to be a little bit more health conscious. As I we thought get you up were going to say ancient, but as we get, I, I made it health conscious as we're getting up in years. Okay. Having a plant-based diet, so even starting young, it would be instead of having a huge pork chop and a little bit of lettuce and salad, you'd have a huge amount of lettuce, tomato, cucumbers, fruit, and maybe have a smaller piece right. Right. of the meat product. And I found if you have a decent salad, you, mm. you, you're, 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 you feel full afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But not stuff. What's your theory about drinking water before uh, you eat? A lot of people say that kind of, a lot of times when I've heard from nutritionalists say when you drink water, um, it fills you up and your body is, your stomach starts growling, your body is not really asking for food, Huh. It's asking for water, huh. and liquid. Wow, I didn't know that. Like I, today, for instance, I got up and I just had breakfast, and like a lot of eleven o'clock, I got really hungry. Yeah, and I drank a whole bunch of water, and then that hunger pain went away. Right. So instead, huh. of, instead of eating the donut, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I, like I say, on these hot days, who wants to be? Who wants to get stuffed? You know. I drink a lot of water anyway. I, I never heard of like drinking water before a, before a meal. I, I know my brother always says, "Drink, don't let your lips get chapped. You, you, you drink water before that happens." <laughs> you know. Uh, let's move on. Define local produce. What's local produce? Let's give it the, the people that are doing this at home a second. Okay. Local produce. Five, four, three, two, one. Everybody, write that down. John, what do you think local produce is all about? I'm going to say I'm going to be. I'm gonna buy local produce. What am I? What am I getting? All right. So when I think produce, I think fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yep. So that would be tomatoes and, and uh, corn. Um, and I just had a nice visual of a roadside corn stand. Oh, I, I did buy. I just recently got some corn tonight, actually. Nice. Um, it's it's out. Where was it? Where'd you go? Oh, I want to market basket. No. <laughs> but they, they're Road getting side. the local produce. They haven't got it from New Hampshire yet. It said right. New Hampshire grown. Okay. All so, right. Um, yeah, that's good. It's nice and, and sweet. Uh, and as uh, you probably know, John, you know, um, when you buy local produce, you're also pumping in the economy, right. but it's fresh, it's local. Right. And it's probably, and there's only right. that little window we have now. That's true. Of that's well, true. Maybe a month or two months. Yep. September, it, October. And and you can save. You know, they talk about Cumbies being a convenience store. There's nothing more convenient than a road roadside mm -hmm. produce stand, right? Uh, name <coughs> five locally grown produce. What's up? All right, my lovely family and consumer science viewers and students, write down five locally, and we'll give you one. Uh, I'm going to go with corn, John. Blueberries. Uh, strawberries. What else we got? What else? We got apples. Some. Apples. Pew, not quite yet. We're not quite no. at apple season yet. No. Yeah. And what else? Uh, pumpkins. Definitely. A whole horde. Definitely. And you got not talk about the green, all the greenery T like tomatoes. Uh, broccoli, tomatoes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Um, we're going to come right back after this quick break, and we're going to start doing uh, terms. We're going to take a little break here. We'll be right back after we play that uh, fabulous song again about family and consumer science. We're we'll right it's back. True. Family and consumer science. Mr. Greenland's podcast. Let's learn facts. Get on the floor. Back straight. Number five. Chew your plate. Chew with your mouth closed. Chew with your mouth closed. Get your elbows off the table. This ain't no 
We're back, Family Consumer Science Television. We're here with the great John Moran. We're playing Test Your Family Consumer Science Knowledge. John is uh, 10 for 10 with a little help from Kyle, the producer, and a little help from Mr. G, but he's doing great. You're well on your way to reclaiming your fax crown. Uh, all right, terms. Define mise en place, which is a French term. You hear it a lot. And uh, any clue on that, John? Any mise en place, M I S E N. P L A S E or P L A S, depending on what you, uh, what book you look into. Huh? What do you think if I say, John, before we make the corn and the cob, what's mise en place before we start cooking? Mise en place. Can I ask Kyle if he, if he? Uh, wow. Okay. Not on this one. No, no, no. You close again. I don't know if Kyle's gonna know it. All right. Kyle, sir. Not a clue. Ah, okay. Let's see. Mise en place. place. It's a French term. And, and in French cooking, in most culinary, you notice you probably hear a lot of uh, French terms. Okay. Uh, like crudité. And I think I'm going to miss this one, Mr. G. Okay. Well, uh, what that means is everything in its place. Oh, okay. As oh, far plus. As you, you, plus. Yeah, okay. you're, you're cooking. You're, before you get cooking, you don't want to be running around when you're making a stir fry looking for the vegetables that you need to chop up. Absolutely not. It's, it's measuring out everything you need before you get started. Okay. And um, I'm sure when you watch a cooking show, you notice, like, especially on like a local channel, um, they'll have the person be like, oh, I'm going to make this. Add a quarter cup of onions, oh. a quarter cup of this. But you notice everything is already cut out All right. and okay. ready to go. Okay. So it means everything in its place ready to cook. Oh, okay. Uh, define culinary, John. Culinary stops. Culinary Kids, adults, what does culinary mean? Now you can ask Kyle, or you can you can ask Mr. G. Go ahead, Kyle. You, you want to grab that one? Just cook it. Anything to do with food? Okay. 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 We'll cool. give you that one. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Um, number three. Define clean. Clean. What is clean? If I say this table here looks very clean. Yes? Well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to be clean? Well, I'm, I'm going to go with, and Kyle, you can jump in. Uh, it's keeping germs and bacteria to a minimum. Okay. How about that? Uh, no, uh, close. Okay. Close. Clean would be visibly clear. Okay. Okay, so my hand is clean. Yes, not too bad. But the next term is sanitary. Okay. So sanitary would mean free of germs. Okay. Clean would be visibly clear. Okay, visibly so, clear. So uh, if you're watching at home, look around you. If you're in your bedroom right now, if you're in your house, is your house clean? Is it visibly clear? Maybe, maybe not. But is it sanitary? You would have to sanitize it before it gets... Someone says clean your room. I'm sure you heard that, John, right? When you right. Were oh, mise en place. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Okay. Uh, number five. So one was mise en place, two culinary, three clean, four sanitary. Number five, John, tell me the correct temperature variants of a refrigerator. Okay, now I'll give you a hint, John. Okay. 32 degrees is freezing. Okay. Okay. So obviously we don't want our, uh, oh, right. our refrigerators to be so far. <coughs> what range to what range okay. should your refrigerator be at? All right. So I gave you the answer to the first. Okay. Be, it would be. Okay. Uh, can I say 35 to 45? Very good. I'm going to give you that one. Okay. It's 32 degrees because if it's over 32, okay. if it's under 32, it will freeze. So it's okay. 32 to 45. Okay. Or, or, thir right, right, or okay. 35 is fine. 45 is as high as we're yep. going. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like okay. to talk about that, but uh, time flies by here playing this game. Number six. How long, Mr. Moran, could you leave something out? Before it starts going bad, uh, and, and I'll give you a hint. This is a multiple choice okay. bonus question. Okay. One hour, two hours, five hours, or six hours. Before, say, you take a piece of American right. cheese, put it on there. When's it going to start going bad? I, I'm going to go with one hour, Mr. G. Two hour, two is the winner. Two okay. is two okay. is the winner. But okay. What, what, okay. It could be one. Right. Say, you, say it's a super hot day. Right. And you got a grilled, you got some cheese outside or okay. some chicken outside that's raw. 
But for the most part, if you're at average room temperature, okay. about two hours okay. is, is, is pretty much the... Okay. You don't want to come back and eat some potato no. salad after it's been on for two hours. That's right. Okay, number seven. Um, the, what, what temperature do you think is the internal temperature that food is considered safe to eat? So if I had an internal food thermometer, which this is a pen, okay? okay. But I have one here. I don't know if we're going to get to it, but and I and here's a here's a here's a chicken leg. Look at that chicken leg, right? And I put it that there in there. What temperature should the inside, the thickest part of your casserole, your chicken, your hamburger, what temperature should that be at? 165. Okay. 165 or 165. <laughs> <laughs> That's so important. I need to say it three times, guys. I think I'm going to go with 165. Right, and guys, so once okay. uh, it, it is funny, uh, but 165 is the time where that chicken, uh, when you cut that chicken open, it will be white inside. Okay. If you ever cut a chicken open, it looks a little pink. Yeah. It's not quite at 165 okay. yet, so that's a good temperature. Okay. But you also want to trust your eyes as well. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Uh, uh, where should you take the temperature of food? On the outside, outer edge, inside, uh, thinnest part, or in, in the most middle portion you can find. I like the, your last option. In, in the middle. In correct. the middle. Yep. So, yeah. Correct. So you're heating up some meatballs right. or, or, or lasagna. You got to go straight into there, right. all the way down. Because if it's done in the middle, it's done all the way that around. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. Uh, okay. Now. Uh, what is a calorie? A calorie. Oh, I got this. I got this. It's the amount of energy it takes to burn. Boy, you're really getting technical. Uh, some unit of sugar. It's the amount of energy. Okay, I, 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 I'm sure you're right okay. on that. What I have is it's a unit of energy you get from food. But you were talking about a certain burn level right. of sugars. Yeah. Same but idea. basically it's a unit of energy you have from food. You're supposed to get 2,000 calories right. a day. Okay. What's an empty calorie? Um, That's number 10. What is an empty calorie? I'm going to go with something that you eat that has no nutritional value. Wow. <laughs> that was correct. An empty calorie, no nutritional value. A candy bar, 200 calories, got no nutrients in there. Cheetos. Potatoes. Cheetos, uh, nothing. Lettuce, tomatoes, vegetables, tons of calor ton calories with tons of vitamins and minerals right. in them. Exactly. That's a biggie. Okay, we're going to move on quickly, John. We're going to get the bonus round running out of time. All right. Here's some measurements for you. I'm ready. Okay, guys, this would be number 20, uh, number 21. Number 21, empty calorie was number uh, 20. Uh, empty. How many ounces are in a cup, John? Um, ounces in a cup. Ounces, 12. Ounces in a cup. Eight. Boom. Tablespoons. How many fluid ounces is in a tablespoon? Number 22. Um, three. How many fluid ounces are in a tablespoon? Three and a half. We went over this. Um, <laughs> wait, ounces in a tablespoon? Tablespoon, yeah. Um, ounces in a tablespoon. Is it, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a fraction. It's a fraction, yeah. Is it 0. 0.7? About a half? So, how many ounces are in a tablespoon? 0. 0.7 tenths. 0. 0.10. Uh, no. Kyle, how many ounces are in a tablespoon? One. Uh, no, the answer is a half a fluid ounce in a tablespoon. Okay, sorry. About Number twenty. <laughs> it's okay. I blew it. No, no, you're, you're doing great, though. All right, all right. If you if you were a, a pitcher and a, or a batter right now, you'd be batting like nine hundred. Right. Not signing up for a gap class. Not. <laughs> uh, how, okay, so that was twenty-three. How many teaspoons? Okay. Are in a tablespoon. That was the. Three one. Yes. Okay. And how many fluid ounces are in that? You, you you said it too. How many fluid ounces are in a? Uh, how many fluid ounces? Number twenty three are in a teaspoon. If there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon. Roughly zero point one seven. Okay. Sounds good. Because that times three is point five zero. All right. Ounce. Now you probably haven't thought of this in a long time, John. But how many ounces? Number twenty. Number thirty four. Uh, are in a gallon. Uh, I got this. It's thirty two times four because a quart is mm -hmm. 32 ounces Excellent. so i'm going with 128 ounces beautiful 35 <laughs> how many cups are in a gallon Ooh, let's see how many uh, 35 how many cups are in a gallon john i can hear the okay gears uh, the gears grinding would it be 16 four times four 
16 cups wow. a gallon. Wow. All right, Mr. Showoff, what is what is the boiling point of, of water? Of water. It, it's going to be uh, 326 Fahrenheit, 256 Fahrenheit. No, no. How many? Kyle, what's the boiling point of water? Number 36. 212. 212. Nice. Correct. Good job, All right, Kyle. good. Uh, 37. What are the variables of how long it would take something to boil? What are uh, some of your variables? Uh, it's density. Yeah. It's amount. Yep. Um, it, was it out of the I'll freezer? Give you a hand. Okay. Uh, pour, uh, pouring it back and forth is going to. No, I'm, I'm putting something on top of it. Oh, a lid. A lid? Yeah. Okay. Yep. The boiling point, the altitude, and how much it touches. What is that called? The surface. How much heat of surface are you touching? Okay. 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 Uh, We're done, uh, Eric. Number 38. <laughs> What's the difference between bake and broil when you have your oven? I'm glad uh, bake and broil. You, if you set your oven on broil, what are you? Where's the heat going to come from? From underneath, correct? Broil. Oh no. Broil's top. Okay. Bake is bake the, is underneath. Is the heat source? Okay. On that. Okay. Uh, I, I, it looks like we're not going to get to anything else. Are we out of time, Kyle? You got three minutes. Okay. Okay. Then let's uh, let's move on. John, I'm going to show you something. Right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this will be number 30. <coughs> oh, God, I screw up these numbers. Sorry, big time. Go ahead. Anyways, here we go. This I'm guessing this is probably 20, 30. Uh, this would be uh, 41. What is this? It's a tray. What is this? Cutting board. Thank you. Board. What is this? It's a measuring cup. Eight ounces, which is a? Cup. What is this? It's a can, can opener. opener. Newfangled can opener. Yep. Okay. What is this? Oh. A masher. Masher. Beautiful. <laughs> what is this? I just used this tonight. There's still some on there. Pizza cutter. Pizza cutter. <laughs> what is this? Uh, Slotted spoon. Slotted spoon. Slotted okay. spoon. Okay. Now, this is a biggie. What's this? And we talked about this today on the show. An so internal food thermometer. thermometer. <coughs> and it's 76, point, 76 degrees in here right now. Nice. It's this is the one we're talking about there. Um, candy thermometer. Wow. The difference between a candy thermometer and a regular thermometer, John. What do you think? What, well, is, what, what, the, what about temperatures of candy? Do you have to go way up? Yeah, they go way up. Right. right. This goes to 400 degrees. Holy which, smokes. Whereas this one... Uh, only goes to maybe 200. Okay. Okay. Huh. Closing in. One minute to go. Ba Baster. Uh, yeah. And hopefully this would be number uh, 41. Spatula. Spatula. And look at that. I don't know if you get a close-up of that. We'll leave you with that. That's the, uh, I don't know if you can zone in on that. It gives a little measurements. Wow. Kyle, can you zone in on that as we leave or is that too small? Anyways, this is a cool little spatula. It has a... Oh, boy. Where are you? What am I doing? Okay, there you go. You can be like a baseball pitcher looking in his hat. Yeah, check, yeah. Check the... yeah. Anyways, um, we'll go over the numbers at school when we play this. I would like to congratulate John Moran for winning his title back, a family consumer science expert. I want to thank Kyle. Take that, here. Agnes. <laughs> Take that, Agnes. Your title is gone. Maybe I can get John back here next week to play another round of Family and Consumer Science Television. I'm Mr. G. Thanks for my wife and everybody to watch. And again, thanks for Mr. Moran and Kyle. Thanks for having me. Well, sure. We'll see you next time.